Conversations, Conversations with, with S.D. Booker. Booker. Welcome to Conversations with S.D. Booker by way of a toast to the men with S.D. Booker. I got a good friend, a homie, classmate. Man, this brother's the father. Man, a great speaker. He need to own that. Great speaker, husband, man, and great neighbor. Great supporter of a toast to the man. We got the brother, the king, Antonio Chambers. How you doing, brother? You doing fine, brother. How you doing today? I'm good, man. Um, I'm good. Hey, man. I wanna, I wanna thank you, man, taking this time uh, out of your day, chop it up with me. I know you got the little one, and uh, you know, like I said, uh, your husband also. Yes, and, indeed. Uh, yeah, you probably could be doing something else with your day off. So I, I appreciate you, man. It's an honor, man. It's an honor to uh, be be in your be in your presence right now, brother. And I thank you for this opportunity. No doubt, man. I appreciate you. Now, the little one, man, your son, he, he's probably, what, about two now? No, man, you give, you you fast-forwarded it too fast. He's actually six months. He was six months, or six months uh, yesterday. That's right. That's right. No, you've been you've been married. Two months. Two years. Two years. Yeah, yeah. Two you, years. Got, yeah man. you got married. No, don't tell me. You got married. It had to be, it had to be July or August. It was actually August. Okay, yeah, because I was... Uh, I couldn't make it. You invited me. I couldn't make it. I was, was at a family town. reunion. Yeah. Yeah. I was at a family reunion, man, in Arkansas, man. And uh, yeah, that was, that was something. That was my first time meeting all those people on my dad's side. Yeah. That was, that was, that was a wild time, man. That's good, man. That's good to be able to be that, be able to see extended family, man. Brad's the way we had to see extended family. That's a blessing, man. No doubt, man. No doubt. That was quite an experience, brother. Now, man, I want to support you. Uh, I reached out to you. When I was writing the book, A Toast to the Men, I Great book, to, man. man, I reached out to you as a as a uh, solicitor your services as a beta reader. For y'all, for y'all that don't know, man, a beta reader is uh, someone you reach out to select uh, to read the book, the manuscript before it's completed, before it's published. You know, the first up to the first two chapters you've written, you give it to uh, somebody you respect and gonna get their their input on it, what they think. And uh, so I gave you the manuscript. I think I was a chapter in. Yeah, chapter two in. It was at the very beginning, man. And uh, I, I I enjoyed it, man. Yeah, yeah. You and, you and your, you and your wife, wife, your fiance, your fiance at the time, I think. Yeah. She was your yeah. fiance at the time, man. Y'all, y'all read it and gave me some great feedback, man. So what were your thoughts about the book when it first came out and you, and you, you read it? You called it your rough draft. The funny thing about that, when you call it your rough draft and me and my wife, we were just actually just lounging. And then you sent me the link and I actually got into it. And it, it, it actually attached, I got attached to it. Mm. And I shared it with her while we was actually lying, just lying, just lounging in line. And uh, she got too interested in it. She was actually mm. pushing me to read more of it. I'm like, oh, baby steps. I mean, because he's not <laughs> done yet. I said, it's right. just a, it's just this rough draft. You call it a rough draft. I call it a great draft. Man, wow. it, was a, it was a wonderful. Uh, I, I, like I said before, I thank you for the opportunity to let me uh, read it before you actually put it out there. Put, you put your baby out there, so it was able to honor. But yeah. what I uh, this your nuggets that you had in that rough draft, man. I take that within myself, man. I was like, I was honored. Yeah, like yeah. Man, I, I felt that I was by myself in certain things, man. But I'm sitting there looking at your. Just your uh, your your history uh, or your or your your stories, right? True stories to be exact. Yeah. And you use it and you turn it into a book. I'm like, man, what a way to teach. Yeah. What a way to teach. Yeah, man. I appreciate you. Yeah, you know, that's what it's all about. Um, you know, anything I go through or you go through, any of us, it's not just for us. It's not in vain. We're supposed to learn from that and give back, you know, uh teach the people. You know, and, and just use them as nuggets of, of wisdom for the people. We got to share. You know, uh, like you said, you thought you were going through some stuff alone. And I think that's the issue with a lot of us, especially I think men, we keep a lot of stuff in. You know, we don't want to we don't want to show any weaknesses or perceived weaknesses or vulnerability. And to say, man, life was handing it to my ass in this chapter of my life, man. You know, we, yes, we want to act like we winning all the time man and that's just not the case you know that uh, pride something else ain't it oh yeah man that yeah. man pride that's yeah, what that, that, man pride. Pride. that man pride yeah yeah that's, that's something different it was always say macho right yeah macho yeah. is the way yeah so it's also humility and humbleness 
being yeah. humble behind it though. Yeah, and and you know that that machismo, um, that pride, it is needed at, at times. It needed a lot of times, you know, to uh, to protect, to uh, to have courage to, to go forward. You know, um, man, we could take it all the way back to the beginning of time, man. Like, if guys didn't have pride and some ego or some some level of that in them, man, how do you protect your family uh, from a wild animal? How do you protect your family from from a group of men or a tribe yeah. <laughs> trying try to you know come in to destroy y'all? Like so, you got yes, to have indeed. that in you, but always you got to have that piece of you uh, that knows how to uh, to be humble and to share you know that that pain. And, and probably I don't know if it's you know I, I struggle with this. I don't know if men should share that with their women or find a group of men to share that with. That's, that's tricky to me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So what, what are your thoughts on that, man? <laughs> me, me, me personally, I believe that, and, and, and I don't take this, I don't say this lightly pillow talk with, with my wife. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing, man, because once again, she's a woman, she's thinking on the woman aspect and I'm thinking that as a man aspect. So when I look at that pillow talk time with my wife, man, I actually learned. And in 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 that in that mindset of learning, um, I'm 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 learning her on how to respond in those times when I might find myself falling short. Right. Even in even in that uh, uh you call it machismo, which is a good 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 big word, man, because machismo macho to me is as as definitely necessary in, in a man in manhood. Right. But I also echo what you actually stated earlier on behalf of that, but being balanced. You know what I'm saying? Being a protector, but also being a man of humility at the same time, but a man of war, but also a man of love at the same time. Yeah. But it's about balance. When you balance, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. That's a beautiful thing. It is, man. And it all way, one, one don't outweigh the next. One right. is balance. Being a balanced minded individual is, is the way to go, to me personally. That's yeah, how I, I, like. I agree, man. I agree. Um, years ago, I think it was a pastor that broke this down to me, uh, the word meek, and we need to be meek as men. And growing up, I always thought meek was weak, was associated being weak. And if you look in Webster Dictionary, they do associate it with being weak. But if you really look at uh, how the Bible was using it, meek really is um, a person that has the power or is in a position of power that can do you harm, that can destroy you, that can kill you but decides not to and, and, and loves you, you know? So that's not a weak person at all. And that's that balance, man. Man, that, yeah. that's, a, that's a beautiful thing. Like, man, I could take you out, you know, but, you know, I'm going to love, love you enough not to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> love you not to. Yeah, yeah, man. That's, that's a whole different position than being weak. Uh, yeah, yeah, man. Um, I want to let the people know the reason um, I reached out to you for that as a beta reader man i respected your viewpoints your perspective we don't always agree <laughs> especially when it comes to politics not. but of course not <laughs> yeah 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 we, especially when it comes to politics um <laughs> yeah we we don't agree uh but but i sharp as iron i'm sharp, iron sharp, sharp as iron. Iron. and i don't mind disagreeing with people but i just want to know their why if they can explain their why, you know. The dissecting, the dissecting yeah. of that why, yeah. <laughs> right, and I still may not agree, but that's cool, but that's their why. And I can respect that. If you can articulate your position, you know, I can respect that. And I, I'm why. in agreement with you. Yeah. I, I, look at, I look at this and I think, Stacey, you said this and um, it was a beautiful nugget a couple of weeks ago and I had to send you like a uh, text message and say, man, yo, 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 your YouTube videos, they, they, I draw to them. You might not think I'm watching, but I'm looking at your videos with you and your wife, you and Mrs. Booker, man. And um, you, you said one thing in the beginning of your, uh, your, your, your introduction, you said, earth is your teacher mm. or your school. You said, earth is, earth is your school. I'm like, wow, I never looked at it like that. But then I also came behind you and said, you know what? That is so true because if you're not learning, you're not living. Right. So this right. earth is our school, man. So, you know, just yeah. still want to let you know that, man, the nuggets that you have shared, whether we disagree on politics or not, yeah. your, our, disagreeing, our disagreements on politics 
are learning experiences for me as a whole. Because guess what? If me and you were thinking the same, right? Or if me and you act the same, I think it'll be a dull relationship that me and yeah. you carry, man. Because yeah. I want somebody to actually be different from me, but also in agreement with me with the disagreement at the same time, knowing right. that we're going to disagree. But man, I love you at the same time. Right. Yeah. That's why I always say, iron sharpens iron. Man, you hit it. You hit it on the head, brother. And uh, yeah, that that's us, man. We we respectfully disagree about some things, man. But you know, we're, we're able to articulate our thoughts. And uh, yeah, yeah, man. I enjoy, man. You do this <laughs> maybe twice a year, man, where you'll put out on Facebook, you know, some words of wisdom and, and knowledge, oh, man. man. And I think, man, it don't matter what I think, but I just feel like you got to do that more often, man. Bro, you, you, uh, a lot of people, and I know you see the reactions, man. A lot of people need that. And you offer something so profound, man, to the universe, man, to the world. Man, when we gonna get some more of, of, of that, that word, man, from you? That's, that's a, that's a, that's a loaded question there, Stacey, man. I, I always told those around me that I said when, um, when, when, when the creator, when God speaks to me and I wake up in the morning, he hits me with something that's real personal mm -hmm. because this message is personal before it goes out to, to, to those so, to social media. And it's very personal and, and, it, and it's a tearjerker, man, because when God speaks to me personally, why am I not willing to share it to somebody else? Because if I feel that I'm in need, somebody else around me should be in need as well. So me personally, that's a loaded question. When God speaks, man, I speak. But yeah, I have to yeah. have to wait till he finished speaking. Right. But I can guarantee you, Stacey, that he is talking right now in, 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 in this, my lifestyle, my, my son, you know what I'm right. saying? Who's looking at me right now. Um, but um, that's a loaded question, man. Yeah. I'll just say this, stay, stay prepared, man. Be ready. Um, yeah. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, it's in the oven. It just ain't came out yet. <laughs> already, already, man. Yeah, I, I really enjoy it, man. And uh, I don't listen to many people, man, but you have a way of delivering it. And, and it got a lot of meat and potatoes in it, too, man. Not a, not any fluff. So, yeah, man. And I echo you as well, sir. I yeah. really do. Um, and like I said, when you said that, I said, man, I say that about you, too, as well. I mean, yeah. you personally, and you put it in a book for me to actually say, you know what, I'm not by myself. Right. Man, I'm not yeah. by myself. So um, when you're trying to reach an individual, individuals, whether it's single or plural, you have to find the right bait and how to cast that bait right. to bring it in for somebody to grab it. Because it's easy. The message can be so true, Stacey, right. behind what we're saying. And I put myself in the forefront of the message um, of trying to bring somebody or draw somebody or actually encourage somebody or lift somebody. But it's a how we deliver. It's our deliverance. Yep. So you can easily go in there and say this, this, and that. But it's that individual, how that person may take it. You could go in there full force, or you can go in there, and no disrespect to any man or woman, spoon feed them. Because right. sometimes you got the spoon feed situations for individuals to draw them or no to encourage them or to lift them. Because everybody is different, right? No doubt. No doubt. Yeah, God, <clears throat> God would definitely honor uh honor your delivery your message when it's delivered in love and not ego it, you know yeah that that energy <clears throat> sorry that energy knows man this is ego he's putting himself out front of, out front of this message yeah this ain't about love this ain't about the people yeah so man yes. you've been you've been married two years man two now years, this man. this your first marriage this is actually my second marriage man and um but my second marriage is my best marriage because my first marriage was like a, and, and this is no disrespect to my child's mother, but um, we was not on the, I mean, it was like a marriage, um, a force. It was like force for me because I didn't want my child to be without her father. So I forced myself to do something that I was not in love with. And right. we have to be careful as men to put ourselves in positions to try to love something when you don't really love it. Right. And um, I love my daughter and I love the, uh, the responsibility as a father for my daughter, but the marriage, my first marriage, no, this is my first marriage. The woman, my Chikara Chambers, the woman that I'm with right now is my first marriage. And like I said, it's not a shot at my, my 
first marriage, but this to me is my first marriage because I love this woman. I love wow, this woman. wow, man, wow. Man, that, that's, that's, that's so, there's so much in that, man. Wow. Uh, wow, there's so much in that. So, you know, the word says, you know, husbands love your wives. You know, wives respect your husbands. And, uh, man, uh, I'm going to break this down because I, I got to, I've talked about a couple of things that relate to this. Mm hmm so you said uh, you did not love her. And I think, and I've been there too. I've been there too. Uh, by guilt, force, uh, you know, trying to do it differently than how right. I grew up. And uh, what, what the thing is, though, you're not, uh, when you do that, you're not, you're not consciously or righteously uh, choosing your sacrifice. You know, your circumstances. Yeah. Are choosing your sacrifice and your suffering for you, and uh, that's misery. That's 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 misery. You know, what I'm that's that's misery. So, for instance, and it's all about perspective and mindset, right? So, sure. if I say, if I consciously say, I'm going to fast for a week. You know, I might have these these cravings, these hunger pains at some at some point. But because I consciously decided to do that and make that decision, I can suffer that, <laughs> you know, with, with joy, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And in good, in good spirit, good harmony, good energy. Uh -huh. But if my circumstances, life causes me not to eat for a week, wow. man, that, yeah, that, that's a whole different energy. And my mindset is torture, yeah. right? Yeah, man. It's, it's, it's torture because I didn't choose that suffering. I, I didn't consciously choose that, that sacrifice. So my mindset right. is not even prepared for that. I'm in panic mode. I'm in stress mode. And that's what happens a lot of times, man, when, with brothers when they get married and yes, they sir. don't love the woman. You know, wow. they don't love the woman, man. Their circumstances are causing them to suffer and, and uh, sacrifice. And, but their mindset is not prepared for it because they didn't it's not, they didn't do that out of love. They didn't do that out of righteousness, you know? Right. And uh, yeah, and so they're in stress mode, uh, panic mode, and that can lead to other things, man. And and ultimately, in most cases, divorce. You know, it did for me, you know, it did for you. Um, yeah, 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 so yeah, and, and I spoke on both of those things, man, about the dynamic of the man and woman, love and respect, and also choosing your sacrifice. And that is wild that, uh, Man, what you just spoke on touched on both of those topics. So, brothers out here um, looking for a woman or want a want a woman, want to marry. Uh, how should they go about connecting or finding that woman? Because um, I don't think I don't think the pool is big, man. To find a find a woman that's marriage material. Personally, I don't think it's a big pool. Yeah, so that's, how, that's so a, how, how a, did how did they how did they go about that? I mean, once again, the question there is individual, and mm -hmm. that individual first has to know himself and love himself mm -hmm. in order to find someone that can 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 echo what he's feeling for himself and also for that mate. Right. Me personally. It's not about, and you know how, you know how, uh, and like I said, I don't say this uh, disrespectful. You know how church folk would say, don't go to the club, don't do this, don't do that. Yeah. Um, but it's an individual walk, man. It's an individual walk on finding your mate. Us being men, I call men, we're hunters. Right. We're hunters, being a hunter. You know, you're going to hunt for what you want. Right. Um, some, choose the physical some choose the mental some choose the social me personally how how that individual does it might be totally different from the way i do it but at the, the, the but the common denominator of what you're looking for is is love man right. it's love um there is not really a gun or a roadmap on this in the uh, self, me personally, my own roadmap is different from another person's 
roadmap, but we all going to the same goal, and that's where right. and, and that's love. You're right. Find someone that you love and that loves you, right. and you guys can be both socially, mentally, physically compatible to handle those things together when those storms do come. And I, I honestly believe that if that individual male, speaking on the male's point of point of the situation, if he is willing to love himself, not so much as how he groom himself alone, but how he mentally fuels himself mm -hmm. with the knowledge that is needed to love another individual along with himself, man, there you have it right there. Yeah, yeah, right. I agree. Yeah, you got, it starts with self, loving self, knowing self. Uh, man, when you know self, there's no limits. Uh, there's, there's no limits to what you can attract and what attracts you. <laughs> Yeah, there's no limits, man. And I think back to that first marriage as a young man. Man, I didn't even know myself. Man, I I didn't, yeah, I was I was lost, man. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, I ain't gonna lie, man. No disrespect, like you say, but I was pressured. <laughs> I was pressured, man, and uh trying to do the right thing. But do the right thing. But um it was it was an L loss turned to a lesson. Because now we got young men, we got men, not even just young men, we got older men, older men. that need this lesson, you know? Yes, and so like Jay-Z said, I, I went through that, so you didn't have to do that, <laughs> you know? That's so, right. you know, it's men listening, it's like, oh, okay. And some gonna listen and, and run with it. And some, you know, it's gonna go through one ear and not the other. But, you know, my job and your job is just, hey, give the nuggets, that, that's it. That's now, right. you, you got a daughter, older daughter, uh, you got the, the new son, about six months old. <clears throat> What's the difference in you as a father and how you're raising and how you, you're guiding and leading your child from when your daughter was born? You were a young man then. <laughs> yep, yep. Hey, hey, you ain't old now, but no. we, 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 I'm 45, so you got to be about 45, 44, 46, something like that. 45, 45. 45. yeah. yeah. But we're in the same grade. We was in the same grade. Yeah. Um, well, have you noticed the difference you are as a man, as a parent? Honestly, I think it's the same because um, as, as, as a father with my daughter, um, I'm still that I was still a protective provider. Now, my son, who's the opposite sex of my daughter, I'm, I'm going to be a provider protector. And I'm also going to be a teacher as well, because obviously we need some better. We need some grown, we need some young men out here that's going to lead. And I, I don't want to be that example, not so much as towards my son alone, but his friends, friends right. and things like that. But the difference is not, is the same. There's no difference. I mean, they're the same. Uh, I was just more protective with my daughter because I didn't want any, you know, knucklehead or any little young thundercat right. trying to you know, say something that I, I was going to let my daughter know that's game. So I got game for you and I'm going to let you know this is what they're going to say. But for my son, it's a little bit more different that I'm going to show him that, hey, open up those doors. Make sure those doors are open. Make sure your mom is well taken care of. Don't let nobody do any harm to your mom when I'm not around. Because if I don't, when I'm not around, you are the man of the house. So those types of things that I want I want to instill in my son, God willing, if I'm able to see those years when I actually see him performing those things. Because he's just six months now, man. Right, right, right. But he looking. Right yeah. Now, he looking right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Man, right now, uh, the time we're in, we're in a very uh, tumultuous or un uh, rocky, rocky time. And maybe it's always been like this, but it just hit the surface. Between men and women, man, it's like uh, it's like this rise of feminism. Yeah, man. And, and, and trying to emasculate men. Yeah, and, man. I mean, this is it's like like we we are very much at odds. You know, not every person, of course. But the genders are at odds, man. And uh, I think it's a dangerous game to be playing on both parts. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, and who suffers the most, man, is the children. Um, yeah. what, what do you think is the cause of this? And uh, how can we, we resolve it? You know, as I, as I sit back and I think, and because you, when you said that, I was thinking about, you know, um, <laughs> And like I said, um, you're going to love who you love. That same sex thing, you know, I mean, that's me personally. I don't believe in it, mm -hmm. but I do respect another person's love. And you can't tell nobody who not to love or who to love. Right. But uh, that, femi that 
that you know proposing to a man and you know that stuff there i i i you might disagree with me, but I think that's the most disrespectful thing that a woman should do to herself to try to win a love from a man is yeah. to propose to that man. I think that she steps out of her error of doing something that that man should be capable of doing if he loves her. Right, right. Uh, because right. if a man loves her, he's going to give his all. He's going to give his all for whom right. he loves. No and doubt. to see a woman, we know a woman going to love their man or they mate. We know that. Yeah. I, I, I'm experiencing it as we speak, and that's my wife, and I love her dearly. But if a man is not willing to do those things that that woman or that wife or that mate is doing for him, man, that's yeah. backwards, man. To me, that's that's the most backwards thing. I, I'm, I still believe in chivalry, man. Um, people don't believe in it. I believe in the opening up the doors um, um, to acknowledge a woman when she, in her presence. To uh, step up out of my seat when my wife comes back to the table and sit down, wait till she sit down, or I escort her to her seat. Those things I still believe in, and it's not so much as uh, what my father taught me. It's what um, you know. You can relate um, the the older school cats that we was around when we was in Spruce. Um, mm -hmm. That was actually teaching us, you know, those that we grabbed those uh, nuggets from that right. respect a woman, love a yeah. woman. Yeah. And a woman ain't no B's or no H's and all that stuff there, man. Respect that woman. Love that woman. Um, but that question you asked, Stacy, it's oh man, it's a lot. It's yeah. a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. I think, man, and and I agree with you, man. Like the whole uh women, well, the feminism thing is, is very broad, but we'll we'll touch on that. Women proposing to men. I think there's two things wrong with this. Um she she has automatically put herself in the driver's seat, man. She has emasculated that man, uh, and and he's gonna have some problems. He's gonna have some yes. problems. Yeah, it, it may <laughs> yes. it may look yeah it may look fly. Yeah, it may look fly, but he's gonna have some problems, man. And uh, she ain't following them. She ain't following them. And and uh, I just see I see chaos in that kind of situation, man. I see chaos. And so, you know, you know, we got a lot of brothers out here, a part of the, the manosphere and, and different things. Man, I'm just a man. I'm not a part of any of that stuff. But right. uh, yeah, but yeah, things are, are just out of order. And uh, I think to to uh, resolve it, I mean, I think we got to hit rock bottom. I think uh, as, as a people, we got to hit rock bottom and learn from our mistakes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, probably as a nation and uh and build back up. Um yeah. but you know, Rome, Rome, Egypt, you know, any other dynasties, Greece, any other dynasties didn't last forever. And you know, America has her time, man. Um, I mm. saw maybe two weeks ago, China is uh removing all feminine uh, uh e if e feminine men from uh from media. Yeah, from having a platform on me on the media, man. So they're like, no, nah, that is too feminine. And they're removing these dudes. And uh, and I think that's the start of putting things back in order. You know, this thing is out of control, you know, and uh they you know have what? a culture out there out there too. And they're having their posture up. So me personally, I <laughs> I definitely don't frown up on that. I actually I actually applaud that. Yeah. I actually applaud that. And like I said before. Um, I, I does, it does not mean I dislike a different type of a person's beliefs or this and that. Right. It's just what I was taught to be a man. Right. I'm a man first. And it's not just saying, man, right. you got to walk it, talk it, speak it, and be it. Right. And then that respect that that person on the opposite side of the sex that you are will see that and will reverence that and understand and respect that and honor that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, you know, it's being forced on us because uh, certain groups are not are not the majority. They're not the rule. They're the exception. But right. if you look at our TVs, our, our commercials, yeah, man. It, it, yeah, they man. put it out there like they are the majority. Right. So, you know, it's, there's an agenda. Right. Yeah. Right. Because they really only make up maybe one percent, if that, if a full one percent. Right. But when you look at the media and television, it looks like. 
you know, they're the majority or it's 50-50. Right. And that's just not the that's not the case. Yeah, that's the case. We know that's not the case. Yeah. And it's, it, it's, I wouldn't say it's sad. It's disturbing because you and I can I, I vouch that that's still some young men and some younger men out here that definitely are going to need some upbringing yeah. to know what real manhood is. So, yeah. and, and as I stated before, I'm not, um, you know, putting no one else beliefs or every decisions yeah. down, but I'm only going to speak on me and those that are around me, especially my son on how to be a man and what manhood really is. So, yeah. Uh, so, so you grew up with your father. Um, uh, what were some of the lessons, man, that you could pass on to, to the people that, that your father gave you? Because a lot of us didn't, didn't grow up with the father, you know? And, 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 and I, I can I stop you and say, um, I did not grow up with my father. My father was in Louisiana. I, I'm in Texas. So, okay. but I knew of my father. And when I did meet my father, my father was that guy that the neighborhood know about. Mm. Um, and um, may he rest on because my father is, is no longer here. But um, but my father had a different way of thinking in life. But he, I can honestly tell you, Stacey, that he was a man. But his choice of living was different from where I am. I look at my dad. My dad was a uh, he was a he was a dope he was a dope dealer. Okay. A dope okay. dealer. Okay. But also the neighborhood knew who he was and who he did not what he did not tolerate as a dope dealer or as a, a man in the neighborhood. So when I go home, when I go back home to Louisiana, the first thing I get is, you know, <laughs> hey, you look just like your daddy. And then they start telling me all these stories about my dad. But I knew of my dad. I knew the relationship I did have, the moment that I did have with my father. But was him raising me? No, man. My moms, my moms and my aunts uh, brought me where I am now. And then my, my uh, I call them my, uh, my OGs my OGs in the neighborhood that I actually uh, gravitated around when I was learning how to accord a woman, you know what right, I mean? Right, so, right. Um, but for us, my dad, man, um, who I still love dearly, even though he's not longer here, but I do know that they reverence, they respected him while he was out in those streets doing what he was doing, but he did this, he was a disciplinarian. And that's, and that's, and that's quite, quite funny. How can you can be a dope dealer but also a disciplinarian. I look at Bumpy Johnson, man. Okay. I look at Bumpy Johnson like, man, he was the same way. Although he did things wrong in the streets, he still was a disciplinarian in his household and mm -hmm. the neighborhood respected him or the, the, uh, the uh, Harlem respected him. And like I said before, even when you feel a person is doing wrong, there's still some right in us all, so. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. Oh, I totally, I totally get it, man. You can, uh, you could be, you could be, uh, a, 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 a dope dealer with principles and morals and boundaries. And uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I and, and um, you know, some standards, I, I totally get it. And you could be a priest yeah. that is not morally uh, pure right. and, and that's corrupt right. and right. Has, we, <laughs> has no principles. So right. yeah, I, I totally get it. So, and you know, that's what, something I try to, uh, be cognizant of just living life, man. I don't put too much into titles, you know. Uh, I don't care what your title is, you know. Yeah, character. I'm just going to character and how That's you right. and, your, and your actions, man. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's so right. yeah, I don't put the I don't put the preacher just because of their title above no dealer. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that's, that's just right. not me. That's right. Yeah, it's about character and spirit to me. That's man. about character. It's yeah. about character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of that. <laughs> The church, man, you know, more and more men, yeah, I see are moving away from the church. Yeah, uh, when I, I know I was a kid, I grew up in the church, man. I probably was there maybe three times a week, man, maybe four sometimes. And uh, mm -hmm. there was always uh, a solid uh, group of men in the church, man. Um, mm -hmm. The deacon board probably had about 10 to yeah. 15, you know, men. Yes. Strong. Um, yeah, strong in the congregation. There were men, uh, but most men were active. But you might find, you know, a few a few men that were not as active. And then on the usher board, you had men. Mm -hmm. Man, when you go to church now, man, man, scares. Being I hadn't been in about two years, but uh, 
you know, I hear I hear stories. There is, you know, a lack of the presence of a man in the church. You know, yeah, why do you think men are moving away from the church? It, it goes back to what you stated about the character. Those that are in the pulpits, mm. are they real or are they fake? Or are or, or they declaring, declaring that they real, but um, those around them, whether they're deacons or, or lay makers, or lay, uh, or parishioners, um, they starting to see that. Right. And, um, and, and a person's character is going to find the truth in it all, man. And I, I, hate, I hate to say this, um, for us, the great falling away of man, men in the church, it, it, it has its different types of uh, uh, issues. Right. Um, F is in the church now, man. F is in the church. Um, um, you know, and like I said this before, um, homosexuality is in the church. Um, man, um, just whoremongering is in the church. And that's men, that's men that's standing behind the pulpit. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and, and it's sad that you can declare... And like I said, there's no right in nobody. Okay, what I mean, there's no uh right or wrong in, 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 in a person in a position. You have to be a balanced person. Admit that you're wrong and learn from it as we as we both agreed to. Um, but for the falling away of men in the church, that plays a part in a lot of those things, man. F um, um men wanna be with men. Um Oh man, uh, men want to be with other uh, women in the church and they're married. Those yeah. things play a part in it too. And also just um, some men having to provide for their families and, and it's going to require them to go give their all. Right. Um, as I use myself as an example, um, I love, I love, I love the word, man. I love church. I love the word. I haven't been in the same amount of years you haven't been, man. And um, there's no shot at knowing you or myself. And right. I feel that church is not so much as church. It's 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 me. Right. me we're the church. Right. Um, we are the teachers. Um, we are right. the examples of those that are around us. So um, the, but the building itself is just a gathering of people that come in and actually worship together. So I do miss that in a sense. But um, that that. That, that question you asked, man, it's it's a it's a plethora, it's a plethora of a, a lot of things um, mm -hmm. that men have left the church on or are not intending attending the churches is more now due to the fact of uh, new uh, leadership. Yes. Old leadership yes. have moved on, leadership, new leadership came in and tried a different approach. And that kind of brings a sting on those that have been there for a while and don't want that new change. So, you know, it's a lot. It's a yeah, lot. that's a, it, a very loaded question. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a lot, man. And uh, I think, uh, I mean, the problem I, I have uh, with the church itself, I love the word, uh, but yeah. I agree the church is inside of you. That's that's yeah. that's your ministry, what's inside yeah. of you and your actions, what you leave behind. Uh, yes. But the, the, today, the church is, is focused on the woman. That's their audience. That's their target market. And people have to understand that this is a business. This yes, is a business. Is. People don't want to, the pastor won't tell you that. <laughs> people won't tell you that it is a business. And don't get That's that confused. Point. Now, uh, there are some pastors that, that I believe that, uh, yeah, that, 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 that have the right intention. You know, it yeah. could be a business, but you can still lead, lead with dignity and be principled. There, there are some that uh, I think are just corrupt, but that's in any business, right? That's in any that's right. business. And so that's, that's right. what people have to understand. It is a business and, and these are men. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's just what it is, man. Um, I found out recently, I won't say his name, but I, I used to be a member of this church <clears throat> and I hadn't been in a while. And I found out recently through my boy, who's, who's an associate pastor there, that the lead, the senior pastor, uh, parted ways they agreed to part ways you know yeah. it was a mutual agreement that they would part ways but Man. that he had been suspended up until that point by five times and that uh you know he had gotten a divorce man uh during the pandemic and nobody knew wow <laughs> yeah nobody knew because we weren't people weren't going to church so everybody was at home right and logging in to service so you may know that you know the first lady wasn't around because the pandemic was going on. It was when right. people started coming back to the church. They started asking questions. Where is the first lady? And then that's when they found out he had went through a divorce. 
And I was like, man, that's just horrible leadership, man. That really shocked me. That that yeah. that not the divorce. I mean, things not the divorce, man, yeah. but as a leader, man, you got to stand before your flock and and, and, and say, hey, I'm going through this. Right. You know, because there's people that's going through your marriage counseling <laughs> uh, uh program. Right. It's people, it's people in the congregation that's contemplating divorce or contemplating marriage. Right. And you the example, you're the leader. And just that's just poor leadership, man, for the people to find out like that, that you got divorced. Right. I'll tell you what would have been even more player. Even though they were going through it, through a divorce, I had gotten a divorce or whatever the case. If the relationship was so good and respectful that they were able to both stand before the church and say, this is what's happening. Right. Man, that say, man, that's that's supreme leadership to me, man. And uh yeah, we're we're just lacking they're lacking that in the church, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah, man, that's crazy. Man. <laughs> that's crazy. I, I, I'm not laughing because of that situation. I'm laughing because you're so right about how are you supposed to get followers or following if you're not willing to lead properly? Right. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, <laughs> there is a rule book on leadership. I do know that. Um, mm -hmm. And to lead, in order to be a great follower, you have to be a, uh, and to be a great leader, you have to be a great follower. No doubt. So I, I, I look at that situation quite sketchy because you're hiding something. And when you hide something, those that you are that are depending on you on gonna sway. They're gonna right. sway. They're gonna. They're gonna. Be, uh, pastor was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. about in this situation? And the pastor was in this situation, but he was not willing to. Yeah. You know. Speak. Open up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> me and my boy. Me and my boy. Uh, Immortal Minds uh, talked about that when I was on this show, his live the other day. Man. And I told him one thing uh, that drew me to really engaging with him was his vulnerability. The brother was sharing some stories, you know, that I was like, man, this brother, this brother opened it up, man. It's to help yeah. people. And one thing that, that uh, turned me off with the church later in life was the lack of vulnerability. It's like, they want you to share. They want you to bring it right. to the altar. But man, right. like, I don't know. I don't know anything about you. <laughs> like, right. I, I don't know what your struggles are. <laughs> your darkness, you right. know. But you know, you, you don't want to tell me how you got over, like how you went through it, and and, right. and the struggles of, of what you you know conquered. And so right. I had a problem with that. And yeah, and so I have a problem with that right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta have the meat and potatoes, man. And, and I, I just like that real that real stuff that's gonna stick to your bones, man. That's called a relationship, right? If I'm gonna have a relationship with somebody, I'm gonna have to get to know you. No doubt. And, and as you stated, the church is a business. So I'm gonna get to know my business partner or, or the person that I'm doing business with. And, and regardless on what position he holds, what are you trying to sell me? What what, right. what is the what is the goal of this situation? Because you shot your goal is to win souls. Okay, we're winning souls like how? You know, right. how are we gonna do this? Are we gonna do it right or are we gonna do it left? I mean, and I and I uh, yeah. You know, yeah. that fakey and shaky stuff, Stacey, I, I, I'm, I've i never been with that, whether it's in the church or outside the church. Right. But fakey and shaky, I, I I don't draw close to it, man. I get away from it, man. I yeah, really do. yeah, yeah. I just can't vibe with it, man. And uh, no. yeah, no. but I tell you what, man. I used to, growing up, I used to think God was outside of me, man. But I'm telling you, man, when I start seeing and knowing that God is in me. Come on now. That gave me a whole different outlook and I accomplished more. I started to accomplish more in life because I started taking ownership and accountability for what happens to me and not something outside of me. Uh, saying, the, the, the devil did it. You don't, the finger, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you don't want the responsibility. You don't want to be accountable, but, accountability. but, but I could be a devil and a God. Come on <laughs> now. You know what I'm saying? Like Come I got darkness in like it is all, it's all up to me what I want do. to lead. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But we want to blame it on something or credit something outside You're of pointing us. Pointing the finger. Yeah. But when I took ownership, man, and became accountable, um, I started doing more. 
I start accomplishing more in life, man. And, um, and, and, and I started looking at that too. I was like, man, that's never been taught in the church. You know, it's like, why are they not, why are they not teaching us this? You know, and I, and I think it's an agenda, man, that, to keep people sick. You know, the, 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 the church I see is a hospital, you yes, know, it is. For, for the spiritually sick and it's to keep them sick, man, you know, just to medicate them, but not really cure them. So they'll keep coming back. I see, I see it differently. And this is what we definitely going to disagree with on, on for the church as a whole. Not every church is not the same. You can, you agree to that? Every church is not the same. So I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Now, I can agree with that, but is, is, is that the exception? Is that yes and, a small percentage? <clears throat> yes and no. Like I said before, it's about accountability and it's about the character, right? Mm -hmm. the accountability and the character that individual or individuals, or depending on if it's a church or, or the pastor. Um, so me personally, I do believe that um, the church is a hospital. We're supposed to go to get well, supposed to seek, seek, seek uh, healing, right? right? Get well, right? Um, the person that's actually so-called the doctor of the church um, who is not prescribing the right medicine or giving out the right medicine and not taking it in with him himself or herself. Right. Uh, right now, this generation, herself or himself, um, definitely is the person that you're going to look at. Right. Like the situation with the pastor that, you know, divorced his wife, you know what I'm saying, was not was not keeping his his, his sheep or his flock intact in on what was going on, but you still doing, uh, you know, uh, marriage counseling and stuff yeah. like that. So it's kind of hard to try to say that all are the same when all are not the same. Remember, it's a business, right? right. It's a business. And um, whether we believe it or not, the Bible is there. You know what I'm saying? There's words in the Bible that says these things, but are we reading to it to its entirety? That's the question that I want to ask to, to those outside this conversation that me and you are, are having. Are you reading it to its entirety and are you holding yourself accountable instead of doing this, pointing right. the finger at someone else? Hold yourself accountable what you need to do right or what you need to do right now. So right. that's the that's the, the the golden goose right there for you to uh, either invest in or to suffer. I look no at that as well. So yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Now, man, let's, let's touch on this politics, man. Oh now, yeah, yeah, man. Um, <laughs> how you feel? I, you know, we used to, we used to have an oh old man, barn. Like you know, yeah, <laughs> with, with 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 who we supported, who we felt should be president. Right. I, I supported Trump. You, uh huh. You supported Biden. <laughs> in a sense. Yeah, in a in sense. A sense. See, see, we're gonna dig into that because that's the, that's the position of most people. Their dislike for Trump <laughs> outweighed right. their light for Biden, and so right. a lot of people voted Biden. They weren't digging Biden, but they just right. didn't like Trump. Right. And, and, and how you man. feel about how you feel about your president, man? Uh, what kind of job? The president you? right now? Yeah. You know when we talk about Trump, no, president Biden. or oh. Biden. Um, honestly, mm -hmm. I haven't got into the news, um, or been in, you no know, reading like we normally would do. You know how I many used to right. dig in and dissect a lot of things, but from what I've been hearing, I, I'm not happy. Don't get me wrong. I'm not happy. I'm not saying, oh yes, Biden, Biden, Biden. Um, but I wasn't like, oh, I hate Trump. Trump needs to go. That yeah. wasn't me. So I'm glad we're having this conversation about politics. It was just certain things that I didn't I didn't agree with on how he performed. I mean, instead of taking accountability, mm -hmm. what he was doing, he was doing this. Yeah. Then when it was everything was right, he was always wanting that stuff to be, oh, I did this, I did that. I'm like, you know what, man, you want fake individual because, but he was a businessman. So when everything goes wrong, he's going to do this. When everything was going right, he was going to do this. So he was looking for love when everything was right, but he was looking to point the finger when things were going wrong. And that's one thing I didn't like about Trump. Before it's Biden, me personally, um, I'm going to use this Haitian, this Haitian uh, uh, situation. You know, the people over in Del Rio. Man, when I saw that, I was waiting for something to happen. 
right. in his lineage, in, in, in his presidency. I'm waiting for him to do something. Right. Nothing was done until he was pressured. And I'm like, whoa, somebody got to pressure you? Somebody got to show you videos and you know this stuff was going on. Right. But other minorities, and we're going to just be real, Stacey, um, Afghanistan, don't people from Afghanistan, the refugee, I don't call them refugees, they, they was coming over because of the, the, the situation that was bad over there. Right. And we welcomed them. Right. We fed right. them. We did all that. I'm like, hold on. Right. But the Haitians are in the same situation. The, the Mexican Americans was doing the same thing, and we treated them like this. And then we doing right. this. I'm like, come on now, come on, yeah. Biden. That's what yeah. I said. Now, come on, Biden. Yeah. Maxine Reese, man. I mean, when she said what she said, when I seen the video this morning, I said, you know what? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Hold yeah. us accountable, not because of what you are, who you are, but what position you hold. And if you say you're gonna do something, do it. Don't just say it just to get the seat. Yeah. And that's the one thing. We both can agree on right now. Yeah. For yeah, I mean, that. I mean that's the problem though. Uh I think that's the problem with, with black people, man. We we just look at how someone makes us feel. Right. Yeah. I mean, we can't we can't we can't go on how you make now is Trump yeah. is Trump uh um uh, the most uh PC guy? Oh no, he's far from PC. No. I mean, I think <laughs> and, and for him not taking blame or point fingers, I think what it was. He constantly stayed on his back foot, man, because he was fighting constantly every day. Man, I've never seen anybody get attacked like that in the media. He didn't have not one friend in the media, man. <laughs> I was, I'm, I've never seen it. Even, even, even Obama did get attacked like that, and they was pretty rough on Obama. But Obama, you sure about that? Yeah, man. But Obama, no, Obama has was a being attacked, too, man, through Trump, huh? Through Trump, Trump was on his behind every time. Oh yeah, he was on. He was on his behind. Yeah, but I'm talking about the media, though. The media. And then we kind of find out that Trump was right about Fauci. Trump had yeah. been saying Fauci ain't about nothing. Trump had been saying Fauci is lying. And then it comes out, <laughs> Fauci was lying. And that, that brother might be brought up on criminal charges. But we was we were saying, trust the science. Don't listen to Trump. And it comes out that Trump was telling the truth the whole time. Now, he wasn't just being difficult. He was saying, man, Fauci lying to y'all. He lying, I don't trust him. And it, hey, he, he was right, you know. But I look at I look at actions. Trump did a lot for black people that people don't want to give him credit for. People don't want to give him credit. He did. He did. Unemployment, unemployment was at an all-time low for blacks. Okay. Uh he he gave money to the HBCUs. I mean, and this this was this was this was gonna happen every year. I think they he he signed a bill where they get four hundred million every year. Uh, brother, he uh 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 the zones, you know, what I'm saying the, the, the property zones where you could get uh, start businesses and buy land in the neighborhood in the community where outsiders can come into your neighborhood mm -hmm. and buy up the land. You got first deals. Uh -huh. you know? Hey man. <laughs> that's some good stuff already man that's some good stuff uh, you know what i think about trump but when he said that is my african-american friend see there that is my african-american friend i'm like really when he did that man he showed his hand no oh, man so he, sh he showed his he showed his hand and then all this stuff everything comes with a price we both can agree everything comes with a price oh yeah he ain't doing it for free. He's a businessman. Yeah, yeah. He about his business, man. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. No so, doubt. I mean, you know, I'm gonna sell you. I'm gonna sell you this for cheap, but I'm gonna charge you interest later. That's Trump, man. Yeah, Trump. I, I mean, I mean, <laughs> when Trump said this, is my black friend, man. But we talk like this, African American. We talk, but we talk like this. We uh -huh. talk like that, though. If we, if you think about it, Antonio, black people talking a way that we don't want white people talking talking in the same way because we say my white my, my white homeboy my white home yeah we don't yeah. just jim we yeah. say our white homeboy uh-huh oh my, my my essay how are you justifying this though stacy but do we talk like that and you didn't have to say we know he could, that's my friend you could have just said that's my friend you had to put no emphasis on who your friend was just said that's my friend it gotta be an african-american friend come on man really come on man 
You don't tag this man. Hey, man I, I think I like Trump. Man. Our camera was on that African American friend. <laughs> Like Where your Asian American friend? <laughs> Where's Where your but, Puerto Rican friend? You and your African American friend. But see, Come on, the dude. thing with Trump, though, man, a lot of this stuff, man, I think a lot of this stuff is tongue in cheek with him. A lot of, is it real? Yeah, man, I think a lot of it's joking, man. I, I really do. Uh, but Biden, he actually put laws and policies in place uh -huh. that incarcerated uh, African Americans at, 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 That's a, the at, a, at an unfair That's rate. True. And, and and more people incarcerated than people were enslaved under his under his reign in Congress, and uh, yeah, he actually said he didn't want his kids going to school with us. <laughs> That's past though. You can can you can you can you say stuff like that in the past and and, and, and correct yourself in the, in the in the now? Can you do that? Well, it, it all depends because you know maybe it ain't PC right now, so you're changing the, your verbiage. But has your heart changed? Mm -hmm. Has your mm -hmm. spirit changed? And so now we fast forward, we're dealing with the Haitians. So, yeah, so has, you, you, has you spirit, talking about that, you got me then, man. That's... Has his spirit really changed? Because they treating these Haitians bad. And I agree with you, the Afghanistans, they were treated differently. Uh, you know, even, even, you know, people from Mexico wasn't as treated mm -hmm. as bad. I saw a brother uh, whipping a brother. Uh, yeah, come on, man. Come on. Come on, the, uh, the Haitians. Yeah. With them cowboys, yeah, it's, it's, good old boy, yeah. It's like, come on, dog. come on, man. Now, like I told you before, we're in agreement on those type of decisions or those type of responses that uh Biden was not responding to unless until the pressure was on, right? Till people start showing videos. Like I said, I'm pretty sure what we saw, you and I saw, they have already saw it, he mm. already saw it before we saw it. He's a president, come on, really. Right. You're a president. They got cameras everywhere. Come on now. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. So but yeah, I hold him twice as accountable of that stuff that happened. And I'm not saying he's the best president. I never said that. I just, and as you say, we get in our, with our feelings. Yeah. I felt some type of way behind uh, Trump. And I wouldn't want him out of here, man, because his way of leading was showing a total divide. It was like a divide, man. We uh, we, we were more in war than we were in, um, in love, man. I'm like, come on, man. I mean, certain things that he did as a president, mm -hmm. I couldn't respect. Now, a conversation that me and him have outside his position, and yeah, but you're a president. You got to lead totally different as a president. You can't lead with your, as you stated earlier, with your feelings, man, because when you lead with your feelings, sometimes when we lead with our feelings, in a sense, it will become a mistake. Oh, no, no doubt, you doubt, no doubt. You're never supposed to make an emotional decision, man. And uh, like I said, I feel like you're just being attacked, man. He didn't handle everything properly, but I think he had a lot of wins, man, as far as his actions and what he got, what he got uh, done in there. Um, Don't take anything back from his W's, man. Yeah, he got a couple of L's too. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no doubt, no doubt. Now, um. Man, I know I know you're a hard working brother, man. You got aspirations, man. What what's next on on your plate, man? Where, where you want where you want to go, man? Because I I just see, brother, we we got to do this more often, man. You're well spoken, indeed, man. I'm, I'm enjoying this ride right now, man. Yeah, I really am. Um, my aspirations, man. I'm 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 always uh open to do something new. Uh, me personally, um, you know, I'm I'm a site manager for a hospice hospice company man so I'm, I'm i'm out here delivering for people that are in need right now so if you know what hospice is yeah that's what i do i, I dispatch uh our drivers go make sure we making sure patients are happy man and comfortable before they actually leave here man so um you know i did eight years in the military so being in the military that's something that i i'm all about the people man and i'm real passionate about what i do um i've always saw myself being a um uh, self-employed or my own business, man. And I've had so many irons in the fire, Stacy. I had to push back, man, and kind of like get my, my what they say, my ducks in a row. Right. Once you get your ducks in a row, um, make sure you get your, make sure the marriage is happy, make sure the babies are fed. Then you can start doing those other things that you want to do. We call them hobbies. You know what I mean? Right. Um, me personally, I look at being self-employed as like a hobby, something that I love to do, but also I'm going to get income behind it. Right now, I'm on that man's dime right now, but I'm required to do that as well. But I'm also going to be a provider. So no doubt. Um, whatever 
I'm capable of doing, I'm a hands-on guy. So what am I capable of doing? I'm doing it, man. But right now I'm doing it the way I'm doing it right now for us is just trying to be an encourager and also being a helper at the same time. So no and maybe it's going to branch off somewhere else. Who knows, man? Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, yeah, who knows, man? But <clears throat> yeah, I see bright things ahead, man. I see bright things. You're, you're powerful, man. Your presence and your voice. Uh, your message is powerful. And uh, yeah, man, I got a lot of love and respect for you. I'm humble, man. I'm humble. It's yeah. not me, man. It's the, it's the man. It's, it's, it's God in me, man. I, and I say that respectfully. Uh, when, 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 when that comes my way, I just give it back to God because it took God to put me in a position to stay humble, man, or, or become humble or remain humble, mm-hmm. even in those hostile situa- situations to remain humble or to stay balanced. Because mm-hmm. once you're balanced, man, you can't be the accused of being this or that you're in the middle well, that's one thing i want to be at at all times and i'm warring every day we warring every day as me no doubt no Bro doubt. rage ain't no joke is it? No <laughs> doubt. I mean, hey we, we will prevail though no doubt yes indeed prevail. man yes indeed hey man i enjoyed you man uh sitting down with me chopping it up with me and letting these people eavesdrop man uh anything yes, you want to want to leave the people with no man uh Whatever you do, man, make sure you stay balanced. That's how I look at it life. Whatever you do, stay balanced. Because you, you lean on one side, you put more weight on one side, and, you, and the other side needs that weight. So stay balanced. A balanced mind will take you a long ways, man. No a doubt. Balanced mind. Hey, man, perfectly said. Brother, we got to do this more often, man. For real. Enjoy it, man. Appreciate the time. Enjoy it, man. Have a good day, brother. You do the same, bro. Peace.